nobody thinks about these things. Like, who's gonna at 21 years old gonna think about co-signing for his younger brother for a brand new car? Being a mom is hard to get into a routine. Like, I, tr- I, tr- I'm not. I try every day, but every day is something new. Yeah, I think people that don't have routines are kind of scared to. They don't want to face reality. They yeah, don't want. Yeah. They don't want to admit this is my life. I have to be up at this time. People still want like this is real shit. Welcome to the show End of the Stick. My name is Champu. I'm here with everybody from the crew. Let's talk about it. Friend Jazz. Jenny from the block. We got special guests. AP. How's everybody feeling today? Amazing. Okay. By the way, this is the short end of the stick. The most <laughs> yonkers podcast in the world. Oh, it is. And I'm feeling amazing today. Happy to be here. I'm excited. We got a new guest. First time I met him, so it's going to be it's going to be beautiful conversation. Yes, yes, it's yes. our pleasure. Even though we cross paths in the hallway. Oh, hundred <laughs> percent. We, 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 oh, all yeah. four of us literally went to the same exact high school yeah, yeah, at yes, different yes, times, yes. different yeah. graduation. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Put it up, you know? Okay. So how you doing today? How you guys doing today? Doing well. Thank you guys for having me. Appreciate it. Also, our pleasure. This special episode is sponsored by Sign and Drive New York. Thank you. <laughs> and this is the boss. Yes, AP. CEO. We're going to get into deep. So let's talk about uh, what you do for a living, how you started. Um, sure. Let's get into it. Let, let's, 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 um, let's see how Jenny's doing. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Jesus That's Christ. Yeah. Yo, I always leave Jerry out. It's you. Uh, for real, you always leave me out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Do, so I'm excited to get into the... That's yeah. why, because you're excited to get into the episode. And that's family. And you know why? You've seen her your whole life. you know life. why? Because in the past... Yo, all right, I'm, let's just start this. And you know, I'm like, all right. So clearly he don't like to do like, you know. He nah. just likes to get into straight I let sex, everybody like, say... How they are, then, all right, let's get to business. All right, let's so, Johnny's the, the fourth one. Let's do it. How do you feel today? <laughs> Sorry about that. This I'm is feeling great. Start, let's, I'm let's feeling great. It. I'm feeling great. I just came out of work and came straight over here. Time to get to it. Blessed to be here. Yes. 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 Yes, 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 yes. Yes. I like it. I like it. Let's get to business. Let's, go. <laughs> let's get to the real nitty gritty. How important is good credit? And not only work wise, in general, personal life. How do you I mean, feel about that? Good credit is extremely important in True. America. I mean, it's, it's everything, yeah, uh, for sure. I mean, it's the difference between a twenty percent rate and a three percent rate. So I mean, uh, break that down. So I mean, if you're a person who's coming in with uh, great credit, you have, when he when he says coming in, uh, he's talking about a car dealership. Yeah, if you're coming in to buy a car, <laughs> yeah, with car, great credit, yeah, yeah. Uh, you have all the leverage in the world with the bank. Uh, you don't have to put any money down if you don't want to. Uh, your interest rate is going to be the best. Uh, if you're leasing, your money factor is going to be the best. So money factor is the interest part of a, of a lease. People think there's no interest on a lease, but there is. It's just very, very minimal. Yeah. So, I mean, it, yeah, like if you have good credit and you come in to buy a car, you have all the leverage in the world. You know, the bank is going to give you all the money. It's going to give you the best interest. So yeah. that's definitely very important. Yeah, yeah. All right. In general, because he's talking specifically about cars, you guys, um, credit to us. Uh, we're, we're just regular civilians that use credit for purchasing stuff. How you guys feel about pr- about credit? Or good incre- having good credit. Well, I'm going to be honest with you guys. Um, since I turned 18, I've had credit. And I've had great credit. And I still do. And from My the man. beginning, That's what's up. I always said, this is important to have because guess what? If you don't have the money, you're not going to... Uh, uh, are you going to borrow from everybody? No. no. Right. You could borrow from yourself. So you build credit, right? Obviously, you start somewhere, um, and that leads you to more financing uh, loans in the in Absolutely. later on in life. Absolutely. Yeah. You could have anything. You know, you could have not a single dollar in your pocket, but if you have great credit, you could get anything. You have a million country. dollars. Yeah. 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 So, you know, yeah. sometimes people think, oh, cash is king, which it is. Mm-hmm. But not always either. You yeah. know, like you have to have good credit. You can't go buy a house with five hundred thousand dollar cash. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? They're gonna look at you like, what? You, what where you got this money from? Yeah. You know, yeah. right. it's a red flag. Yeah. It's a big red flag. So you know, sometimes uh, people don't understand that. You know, and they think, oh no, I got, I got cash. I got okay. It's great. Cash is always better, but you, uh, a great credit score, it's even better. It's mm-hmm. it takes you so much more. In life, and you know, it's sky's the limit. How'd you yeah, do yeah. it? How'd you do yeah. it though? So, especially for, from that young. By the way, I got my car from him. 
Honda, Honda Accord 2021. Sure. You made a good deal. Sure. Yes, sure. I did. Yes. So I, I yes, I did. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Black edition. Yes. My man. And I appreciate you guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, damn. Um, credit has always been important in my life. No, um, how'd you do it? Oh, how'd I do it? So for, I just, for the viewers. So course. I just basically I just applied for a credit card. Simple. Uh, it was three hundred dollars. It wasn't even much, but I was young at the time, and that's how I started building credit. And when I was uh, twenty, I want to say twenty one, twenty two. Um, I had a car at the time that I had finished paying off. It was completely paid. And I put my brother, well, my brother was going to college at the time, my little brother. And he was kind of struggling with a car. And I said, bro, let's get you a new car. He said, nah, you crazy. He was young. He was younger than me. Mm -hmm. He was we got him a brand new Honda Honda Civic SI, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, and I, you co-signed? No, no. I put it under my name, but I put him, for... but I put him as a co-signer. Okay. Because yeah. I said we're gonna build your credit. So you build as this credit well. up as well. So yeah. very important. You know, very important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, that's how he was able to build his credit also from young. So I started him young. And to this day, you know, he's very um responsible when it comes to credit. And I think it's important to have that literature from mm-hmm, young mm-hmm. and know that. Credit goes so no, far. No, it goes beyond. I mean, it, it opens doors. You yeah. Know? So, you know, it's absolutely the most important thing for sure. You asked me, um, like, what do I think about it? Like, I wish that I would have made better choices, like, growing up because I made a lot of stupid ones, like, when it came to credit and stuff. So I'm building it back up, but I definitely wish I could have think did things a lot better. I mean, and would have took all, it. I'm sure we all did. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we, we all yeah. maxed out those credit cards. But, of course. So, so did yeah. I. Yeah, yeah, so so I, mean, I'm, I, learned, I learned the hard way, but at least I know like I have a son, so like I can teach him how to build his credit and do mm-hmm. better and stuff. Mm-hmm. So. Oh, yeah. Another thing. Um, having a credit card doesn't mean free money. People get that misconstrued Very a lot of yeah, times. Yeah. Because, oh, damn, I got a 20. I was confused with that at 18. You know, <laughs> so that's the thing. I got approved for one time when I was a lot younger for a credit card, and they approved me for $20,000. Uh-huh. I said, holy. What so you were balling. What am I? Mm-hmm. I'm like, damn, I feel like a man. Mm-hmm. You know, my walk was different. I'm like, don't talk to me, okay? Mm-hmm. You know, but, you know, it, it doesn't matter. At the mm-hmm. end of the day, you got to pay that back. You got to pay yeah. You know, because yeah. people think, oh, like, you're not supposed to pay it back. Yep. And that's how you go into that rabbit hole of not having good credit and, some people get into bankruptcies yep. due to that, mm-hmm. you know, and that ruins, I don't want to say your life, but it ruins that aspect it, of- it could, lead, it could lead down a rabbit hole real fast. Of yeah, yeah. For yeah. sure, so it's, um, it's tough. Then when you really want to start doing things for yourself, you can't because yep. of all of that. Yeah, 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 yeah. absolutely. <laughs> the mistakes you make uh, from when you're young follow you when you get older. So. Also, yeah. very, very important. Um, even if you can't pay the full balance, mm-hmm. which a lot of people don't, mm-hmm. make sure you at least pay the minimum payment. Of course. Yeah. Don't people, be late. Don't people, be late. people yeah. you know, like, if you check my thing, 100% yeah. pay me on late. time yeah. at yeah. always. You know, because I'd rather have $3 in my pocket and make sure my bills is paid mm-hmm. than, oh, I got 800 in my pocket, but, I, you know, like... Yeah. I, I, that, I, I always said that. Like, like, like if I'm broke and my bills is paid, I feel like rich, you know, like exactly. I feel good, you know? So, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah so, yeah. I so I, 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 I strongly believe it's just a mentality. Mm-hmm. Thing. The way you program your mind, you're able to, you know, excel and take that further than, you know, what you have, you know? But obviously, you know, at a young age, it's difficult because, you know, not everybody's going to do that. We mm-hmm. do stupid things when we're younger. But um, not everybody's... All, as mature as I was at the time either. Mm-hmm. You know, like nobody thinks about these things. Like who's gonna at twenty one years old gonna mm-hmm. think about co signing for his younger brother for a brand new car? So he could build his credit. Right. Yeah, people yeah, thought I was crazy. Right. People yeah, looked at me like I was of crazy. Course. Yeah, mm-hmm. Of course. Of course. I didn't care because I'm like, listen, I'm setting him up. Mm-hmm. I don't want him to struggle going to school mm-hmm. with a you know, with a car that's gonna leave yeah. him stranded somewhere, you know. It's, it's your last name. So you know, why of not course. you know why not extend a hand? So Of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely, yeah. you know. Hell yeah. Absolutely. So what's the difference between paying a cash for a car, financing it, or leasing it? So paying cash, that's a interesting thing. So one, I used to work in Manhattan Jeep. Uh, oh, really? Yeah, around 2015, 2016 time where like Wranglers were like super hot. Mm-hmm. So you had uh, like these Wall Street people, a lot of finance guys coming to buy Wranglers straight cash, <laughs> you know, for the Hamptons, you know, at the time. That's crazy. Shit like that. So... um 
a guy told me, I sat down with a customer and I asked him, you know, one of the uh, qualifying questions is, you know, how do you normally purchase your car? Is it leasing or financing? So he tells me, you know, AP, I'm going to give you a lesson. Uh, if you can't buy something cash three times, don't purchase it at all. So that always stuck to me. Uh, so I say that to say this, if you're not, if you don't need a car right now in this very moment, if you don't absolutely need it right now, it's not the market to buy. And I know I'm biased because I sell cars. I want people to buy cars from me all day. But at the end of the day, it's not the right market to buy. Uh, if you were going to lease or finance, uh, I would certainly lease uh, just because after three years, you don't have any ties to that. You can either get a new car or, you know, whatever. You can. And, and it's also tricky. So, for example, if you have a specific credit score, you may qualify. For, so, so leasing goes by tiers. Mm -hmm. So it's tier one through like tier seven, depending on your credit score, right? So tier one is a 750 credit score and up all the way to tier seven is like a 540 credit score, right? So let's say there's some people that come in with a 600 credit score. They may qualify for a tier one on a lease, but if they were to finance, they'll probably get like a 12% rate. So, it, you know, I mean, it just depends on your situation. <clears throat> Uh, why yeah. wouldn't why wouldn't a dealership want somebody to pay cash? What are the reasons? Uh, well, because they want to charge you uh, back end which interest is, for which is interest, yeah. and also they want to sell you warranty. Uh, you know, sell you extra products and stuff that come along with the, with that contract. Mm -hmm. So uh, definitely, it's not beneficial for a dealer at all. But uh, that is, if you have the cash, that is the proper way to to kind of be sky free. Or if you have, goes back to credit, if you have the good credit, you kind of have that leverage and you can take advantage of whatever uh, interest rate they're offering at the time, which is nowadays it's probably 3.9 to 5.9, or some cases, some brands might offer 0%, which is why not use the bank's money at 0% and you could pay it, you know, whenever you want to, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But yeah. yeah. So, yeah. yeah, yeah. so I myself used to work <clears throat> sales at a mm -hmm. dealership yeah, yeah, yeah. at one point in my life. And so I know all these things mm -hmm. too. And, um, it's 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 really crazy because um a lot of people are not educated yeah yeah you know in that of course aspect. of course so especially our people yeah, yeah they yeah, just yeah, yeah. you know they just you mm -hmm. uh, 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 i don't yeah, matter yeah. what you say they yeah. sign and you mm -hmm. know they sign and you know the first deal is not always going to be the best deal no you know no. and yeah, yeah. sometimes some you know a lot of people don't understand it which is mostly the minority mm -hmm. that don't understand that um they just think, okay, this is what it is. All right, all right. So I have to pay that. Yep. So this is you. This negotiation. Yep. You can always negotiate to something that fits your budget, of or course. something that you could afford, of course. or something that makes sense. At the end of the day, the dealer wants to sell your car. Of course. Yeah. So I mean, I always tell people, whatever, throw them an outrageous number. They're gonna either shoot you back something that's that they can do. Or they're going to tell you it's not realistic, but just shoot them back on our outrageous offer. Even mm -hmm. myself, shoot me back on our outrageous offer. I'll either tell you, hey, that's extremely unrealistic, or I could do this. You know what I mean? So there's yeah. always room for negotiation. Absolutely. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I respect you saying that because yeah. not everybody's going to say that. No, I mean, <laughs> in car I mean, sales. Listen, we're a business. We try to treat everyone the same. And uh, we have, uh, I guess, a standard of what every deal should make. So we try to shoot at, at every client with that, you know, and then whatever we negotiate, we take it from there. But mm -hmm. obviously, we're not taking advantage of anybody. We want it to be fair for everybody, you know, for, for okay. both parties. Yeah, right. that's great. That's yeah, great. Yeah. Okay. Um, any, any, like, insight you have to tell people, you know, buying a car, like, what should you do before you walk into, like, a showroom and, like, are ready to make that deal? Uh, I say just be be aggressive and uh, always lead the way. Uh, as a customer, you you guys are the bosses. Uh, so w whatever you guys want, we're gonna try to do the most to try to get there. Uh, but it's not always about profit, uh, especially with us. We're a small business, so we want you guys to always send people to us and stuff like that. So uh, yeah, I say just be aggressive with with negotiating. You know, yeah. I think I think uh, a lot of a lot of people are, you know, don't tend to come back. You know, they kind of, oh, can you do this? No. Okay, I'll go somewhere else. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. it's like, uh, instead of just, you know, if you like the person. So number one thing is sell yourself as a salesperson. So I try to sell myself. And uh, if we come to, you know, some kind of report, we like each other. I think, you know, we have a deal there and stuff like that. So yeah, it's that's, always. That's yeah. very important. Yeah, mm -hmm. I remember yeah, yeah. when I was doing sales, that is extremely important. Yeah, yeah. If, 
You can have the best deal on the table. The person don't like it, they might not even yeah, buy a it's coffee. A wrap. It's a wrap. So There's it, been many times yeah. I had a deal on the table and I, we literally given the car away. Mm-hmm. Like the dealership is not mm-hmm. making no, no money. I wasn't making a profit. And people will simply walk away because they maybe something you said yeah, something didn't click. or maybe something you didn't do. Yeah. Maybe they judge your appearance. Yeah. That too. You ever mm-hmm. judge somebody by their appearance? I think we all did. Talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> have you? Uh, in car sales, particularly, yeah, yeah. Uh, me, particularly, you know. So, like I said, I, somebody ever came in through looking like the homeless or have, like rich. Uh, people have definitely, you know, looked at me a certain way yeah, for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. You know, like, uh, you know, like I don't look, you know, like the regular way, I guess, <laughs> car salesperson, you know. Yeah. So, but I think it's very important. I think what's inside is what really matters. That's what, that's what matters at the end of the day. Yeah, and if people uh, grab grab that. That's you click, you know, yeah, that they'll buy cars from you for the rest of their lives. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, so, but yeah. All right. Have you, you what? I was saying, you ever <laughs> judge somebody by their appearance? I mean, we all have done it. Right. We, yeah. do it on, we do it on I that. We do it on that. We do it on the car, yeah, of course. <laughs> I think it's what Fran be always saying human nature. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, who hasn't judged somebody? I mean, everybody judges a book by like, the No, every even, day, every you know, day. Like you sometimes, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you know, people judge me all the time mm-hmm. because they see me. I look serious all the time. Oh, I don't like this guy. Yeah. Hmm. But then Literally, they, know. But then they really get to know me and they yeah. fucking love me. Of They're like, oh my God, this guy is a sweetheart. Facts. I love him. Like, you know, like they hug me. Like, it's, <laughs> yeah, for yeah, real, yeah, yeah. I'm so serious. Yeah. It happens all the time with me. To the point that sometimes, I, like, I've been to, like... They hug me. To, like, uh, a bank. Right? I go to the bank. And sometimes, you know, like a random bank. They don't really know me there, right? Like, it might be, like, somewhere else. Oh, uh, why don't you smile? You know, you're not having a good day? Like, I'm having a great day. It's you know, face. but it's just, like, <laughs> I, I'm a serious-looking person. So, yeah. some people might take it a certain way. Think, like, you know, and that's another thing, too. Going back to the dealership. The guy that was training me said, "Oh, you gotta smile more. You gotta more. smile. Yeah, you, you gotta, gotta smile, smile more." I'm like, "Damn, you know, it's tough for me because your, your smile is your biggest weapon. It is, yeah, yeah. but it's like, what am I smiling about? You know, yeah, like, yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm not saying I'm having a horrible time, but it's just I just look serious all the time, and well, that, that, smile, that's yeah. why it didn't work out for smile, me. I was like, right? this, this, smile, this doesn't work for me. <laughs> no, it's tough. It's, it's a it's a tough business. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, you gotta put it's a grind. You know, especially if you're not having like a great day, you gotta put on the face. Yep, yep. You know, it's yeah, it's yeah. not easy, man. Your girl just called you, you know, talking about some shit, and you still gotta go out there. <laughs> <laughs> Pretend, like Pretend like the world is not crumbling like, down. Yeah, and real. you wanna know something? I, um, A lot of car sales guys have marriage issues, of right? Of course, yeah, of for course. For that reason, of course. because like... Too many hours? Well, the hours is crazy. Yeah, right? the hours are crazy. The hours is insane. Like, yeah. I was doing like 12 hours a day. Um, So you don't have that much family life. No, you, your quality of life is not really the best. No, it's really not the best. No, especially if um, you work in front of franchise. Yeah, you're, it's you're there, it's yeah. not it's sixty l- hours a week minimum. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's, uh, that's why I left that world. So yeah, not, it's yeah. just not. not life. There's not no life. life. There's no life. That's no. why I felt like I was trapped. I I felt like I was dri- like driving myself to prison mm-hmm. every day, you know. Yeah. And maybe that's why I wasn't happy all the time. <laughs> <Absolutely>. <laughs> but you know, it's, it's 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 a grind, man. You know, so I respect yeah. you guys for doing that, man. It's not an easy job. You know? No, no, it's not. It's not. It's, it's not, not an easy job. But, so um, speaking of families, did you guys hear about that that kid that um killed that cop? That he had an M five. He didn't hear, in, in, in Yonkers. In Yonkers. Oh, yeah. In Yonkers. Yeah. So yeah, he, he killed. He killed the. Yeah. Yes. Maybe this like was a like a month ago. Two months ago. Yeah. He um he, he's sixteen year old boy. Uh huh. His parents bought him an M5, and he was test driving it. I forgot exactly where it was Tuckahoe. on Tuckahoe, and he I, how did he crash into the cop? He like the so, cop, the cop died. Like was he on duty or was he on he duty? Was yes, on he, duty. Was. he was. He was. He was. He was and he was a well known cop. Yeah, he was well known. Like well like I'm talking city. about people from Boston, like people from everywhere, yeah. the city, everywhere came out to to his his wow. to his service and everything. I think his service was right there across the street from the. It from was Yonkers Ave. Oh yeah, because oh, yeah. yeah. so the parents, the one, parents one, one of our podcasts, brand new, brand one of our podcasts, we we mentioned that uh, uh, Frank. Yeah. Baldino. Yeah, yeah, We've yeah. had a moment of silence uh, for him. Yeah, we, we did have a moment of silence uh, for him on one of our cops. We, we had a moment of silence. That's, that's, that's the one know. where the kid was speeding, uh, I think it was westbound, southbound, and then, uh, yeah, Yeah, ridiculous. he hit, so, he hit like a, bu- I think he did a, a, a beeline bus, 
and then he crashed. He, he ended up crashing into the. Is the kid facing any consequences? I, you know, I have no idea. The last we heard, he was in critical condition. He was unconscious in the hospital. Yeah. Oh, the kid. But that was yeah. He was oh, in critical. That was the last we heard, though. We, I, don't, I don't know about so, that. So, um, supposedly, I don't know how true this is. This is allegedly, he was well connected. Politi- politically, <laughs> the, who the, the parents? Kids family, your kids' family. I mean, they bought him a brand new M five. Yeah, well, you know, yeah. Yes, <laughs> that's, I mean, the, that's the question that that yeah. I that I kind of have. Like, if yeah. like say you were in that situation where a parent well, wanted to buy a kid like a crazy car mm-hmm. like that, like would you talk them out of it? Like, what? How would you go uh, about that? Honestly, yes and no. A seventeen year old kid comes in and wants the sky. Well, he was sixteen. No, I'm saying his situation. Yeah, yeah. Um, a 16 year old kid comes in and says, I want the skyline, mom. And you can see this guy don't yeah. know how to control it. It's tough. You yeah. know what? There, there's instances where this like has happened. Like not this specific situation, yeah. but where the the deal beats your conscious. <laughs> Sorry. Like the deal beats your conscious and like you like, damn. I even called my mom. Like, mom, do you think <laughs> what do you like, mean? Like, wow, that's like, serious. Like, like, for certain shit, I've called my mom. I'm like, mom, do you think like this situation is like, should I sell this person this car? Because I like I don't feel right about this situation. And then she's like you know, you're running a business at the end of the day that whatever that has nothing to do with you, sell them a car, blah, blah, blah. And all I can say about that is that you have to listen to your voice, your inside voice, <laughs> not even your mom. Because, yeah. you know, it's if, a guilty if, conscience. At the yeah, end of the day. and it does come back, bro. Like it does 100 percent. So it's always an issue with that specific yeah. deal. So. so so that means you have had. Of prior course. Issues. Yeah, of course. Of course. Well, like accidents. Like, do you have like anything like. Uh, not even just probably worse, man. Like, uh, all right, so you guys want to hear a crazy, like, our story? Of course. Yeah, of course. <laughs> we always down for a story. Right. So, recently, this one lady uh, calls me to inquire about a car, right? It just so happens that she's like a wealthy, I guess her husband is like a wealthy guy or whatever, and her father is a wealthy man, lives in like uh, Park Avenue in the city, like a duplex apartment, you know, one of those. You know, yeah. Her father, older, you know, guy happens to co-sign for one of her cars. Mm -hmm. She ends up, um, you know, like missing payments and stuff like that. So the father starts calling me like, hey, you need to help me, you know, get get me out of this situation. So I'm okay. I will do my best. So I end up calling the lady. I'm like, ma'am, you know, your father needs to get out of the situation. Let's trade you out of this car and get you into. uh..." I saw it as an opportunity for myself as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It just so happens a lady has a restraining order against her own dad. Oh. And she is not giving up the car that the dad is, like, co-signing for. So yeah. she's like, but I want this. You know, get me this. So I'm like, okay, I'll get you this. It's like this older lady. She wants a Dodge Ram pickup, right? Well, I'm kind of kind of gave it away. That's who it is. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> right? So then, um, yeah. So the night, bef- the night before delivery... I, I tell her, hey, we need a deposit to lock this whole thing in. We usually, you know, take a deposit, you know, certain customers, right? So she's like, great, I have cash. Come over to my house. So I'm like, oh, boy. Okay. So I go, I know where she lived because I sold her two cars previously. So I go to her house and uh, she's like, come upstairs. So I'm like, great. So as I'm walking in the apartment, the apartment is full of like dog feces, right? So it's like, oh. you can't even step anywhere, right? It's like pretty, and it's like a wealthy kind of place, right? So then uh, she's like, come in the bedroom, come in the bedroom. Because, you know, it's like a lot of dog shit everywhere. Uh Oh, my God. What? So I walk in the bedroom, (laughs) right? There's like a bunch. I wish I was making this up. There was a (laughs) (laughs) There's a bunch of disco lights going. Right? And you <laughs> thought it was a party, my man. Yo, oh, you bro, thought it was a party. Bro, there's a disco lights in a room. Like, (laughs) shit is going crazy. All colorful, right? None of this alarmed you to turn around. No, because I'm looking for my deposit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm there for the money. Yeah. So then uh, she proceeds to light a joint. She like lays on the bed, lights a joint, and hands me the envelope, like the you know the deposit or whatever. So I'm like, great. She's like, here, do you smoke? So I'm like, no, you know, I try to whatever. And uh, I'm like, no, 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 it's okay, ma'am. You know, thank you so much. She's like, you sure? You sure? You sure? I'm like, no, no, no. They kind of they drug test, whatever. You know, I, I don't smoke. So then uh, she proceeds to give me a pre roll. And like a little box and like sticks it in my jacket. So I didn't think anything of it. Like it kind of looked like one of those like pre-rolls you buy at a dispensary. So mm-hmm. whatever. Thank God I don't smoke joints. Right? Thank God. I'm going to tell you why. So I give it to one of my friends. Like here, you know, whatever. An hour later, he calls me. And uh, he, uh, I don't know if you guys are familiar with like, I guess, Graba. Yeah. yeah right? So... He smoked his joints with Graba. So he wanted to unravel it, take the weed out, re-roll it with Graba, right? 
<laughs> Yo, how that shit had crystal meth in it, my man. What? Yeah, bro. So yeah, my friend sent me sends me the video of like, yo, what is this? All oh, this white crystals on it. And then uh the person who was with them at the house kind of like deals with this shit. So they uh, you know, right away uh identify this shit as crystal meth. And uh you know, I just, at that moment, I was like, wow, like, you know, imagine I would have took a hit of that shit. I could have probably died, number one, you know, or yeah, had a crazy reaction. Yeah, of course. And how did I look to my friend that I just gave him this joint? Right, the right, you know, right. Like, you know, but thankfully they were like open-minded about it. Yeah. They knew what it was. But yeah, that was pretty crazy. Yeah, so... Yeah. So, so what happened after she gave you? She slipped it in your pocket. No, I, oh, well, well, no. <laughs> no, no, no. Talk I mean, about it. you dirty dog. Yeah, you, yeah. dog. you didn't hit her you up or her oh, You didn't, you didn't write, write her or anything, um, call her or anything. No, no, I, I said, but to answer your question, I, I said thank you and just walked out. Yeah. But <laughs> just so you know, but um, I, yeah, I'm not. Yeah, that's uh, feces on the floor. Come on. Uh, but, uh, oh my god! Uh, I I wanted to like I really wanted to like call her out, but then I was like, you know what? She, she I guess she's a I, customer, cute professional. That too, and, and she probably wasn't in her right mind either. She probably thought it was cool to do that, you know? Like, who knows? You know? Yeah. So, so I, mean, I just kept it. You know, I just thank God that I didn't turn right. around and like that shit. Yeah. Probably like this yeah. cool to do crack. You know? Yeah, bro, that shit was Let's crazy. Crystal meth is different. That's, yeah, that's different. Yeah, you yeah. know what? I, that that one hit could have just. Yeah, you, turned, you, you know what I mean? Like people smoke that one time and it be hooked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would have been done. Yeah, yeah. 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 Thank yeah. God. That, Thank I, God. Let's yeah. give a round of applause. <laughs> honestly, honestly, that's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's that. how a lot of people become addicts. Yeah. You know, you know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. People get Every set one up. hit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, yeah. DMX. Yeah. I was just about to say that. I said that's how DMX DMX, beautiful person. First and foremost, Rest in peace, bro. legend. Absolutely. Oh, so he was a prophet. He was a prophet from God to He was the original prophet. He preached God all day, every day. Absolutely. He was, he was straight love. You know, Yonkers love. Absolutely. Real love. This is real Yonkers right here. Yeah, <laughs> for real. For real. Yonkers shit. For real. For real. Does it get any more Yonkers? There, there's two types of people. That people that like routines and need it, and that makes it feel comfortable and everything's peace. Uh -huh. Or there's people that just wing life and just day by day and don't really plan shit. All three of them, all four of them, I mean, but well, well, how are we and what, what do we think? Should we get better? Should we do worse? Do we recommend anything to anybody? Who goes yeah. first? Who wants to go first? Honestly, it's I, I, having a being a mom is hard to get into a routine. Like I, I, I'm like I try every day, but every day is something new, something like you know he's he's growing, so I'm I'm growing with him. But like. I think everybody should have a routine. I mean, I do try to be organized as much as possible. You know, I'm not perfect, but um, it's definitely important to have a routine. They say it takes 21 days, to like to to, to, to right yeah. to 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 have a habit, and um, you know, little like little by little, I do I do try to change up or whatever. But it's it's tough. I'm not gonna lie; it's not something that happens overnight. Like you really gotta like have a good mind not to absolutely. do it to do so. Nah, and I mean the question basically is because some people hate routine and some mm -hmm. people enjoy it. You know, like I'm the type of person that I don't mind a routine. Mm -hmm. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Um, some people it drives them nuts. Yeah. You know, like I know some people that if they was to do the same thing day by day for a week straight, they'll lose their shit. Yeah, yeah, no, no, it's, you know? it's tough. I think like in, like in my personal life, I like a routine. Uh, like you know, day by day shit. You know, mm -hmm. like uh, going to the gym or eating at a certain time and stuff like that. But when it comes to business, I, I really don't like to have a routine, just because things change uh, yeah. like every minute, or a customer might change their mind. Or I think just having a routine and uh, entrepreneurship period just leads to disappointment. I mean, I think you know, I think you should just have an open mind and, and take it day by day. Yeah. To be honest, but when it comes to your personal uh, improvement, you should definitely have a routine. And uh, have set goals and, and you know things you want to do in your day by day. Sure. Okay. Yeah, I think people that don't have routines are kind of scared to. Mm -hmm. It's like they don't want to face reality. They yeah, don't want. Definitely. They don't want to admit this is my life. I have to be up at this time. People still want like this is real shit. Like I feel like it's ninety yeah. percent of the world. Yeah. If people got to wake up at six a.m. they'll still be up at one a.m. scrolling through through yeah. TikTok mm -hmm. or YouTube. Mm -hmm. It's like. Mm -hmm. It's 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 not fun to have a routine. It's not yeah. fun to have a curfew. No, it's, it's not. No. So Discipline majority of people, yeah, yeah, majority yeah. people just want comfort and mm -hmm. enjoyment. Oh, I gotta work tomorrow. Yeah. Let me just enjoy this YouTube video. Let me enjoy this Netflix. Yeah. 
So it's all about that comfort and that fear of, oh, I don't want to admit I got to be in bed by 11 if I want six, seven, eight hours of sleep. People have that fear and that, that guilt, that hate. Yeah, yeah. And it's funny you say that because like we all know what we need to do to get exactly. better. Yeah. Everyone knows exactly yeah. what we need to do. Hundred percent. Like and for it's some, like it's for not fun. Reason, the right thing yeah. is not fun. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's that's true. exactly what it's it is. True. The right way is not Even fun. Even my son is like that. He hates routine. <laughs> it's kind of like we have the check engine light on mm -hmm. for right. ourselves. But we choose to ignore it. We choose to ignore you it. You know what you gotta you know do. What you gotta do. You know what are you exactly doing? What you gotta do. It's you also like yeah, yeah, yeah. you're driving in. Yeah, yeah. You know what we're doing? We're just putting a tape over it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like it's, it's, also, it's also it's also diet. Yeah. You know eating right is the right yeah. thing to do, but it's not fun. Of eating course. right doesn't taste no, good. No. Eating right is not easy and convenient. Working out is painful. Yeah. 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 All the time stuff is difficult. That's why I don't work out, I'm not gonna lie. I hate being sore. Like it's just, it, that's that's what just that's what just discourages me, I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. It's just being sore. But it's like, if, it, if it's not sore, it's not working. Mm -hmm. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So yep. I mean, I've, I've been saying, I'm gonna go to the gym, I'm gonna go to the gym, I'm gonna go to the gym and just walk sore. by the gym. We're not getting younger. <laughs> we gotta I reverse know. the clock. We gotta reverse the clock. Yeah. I know. So, Speaking of uh, clock is something deep because Speaking of clock, this is the end of part one of episode 15. The okay. clock has just ticked. Ah. Thank you very much for watching. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That was a smooth transition. Uh, you you okay. do it, you do it every episode, I swear, I swear. No, the last I time we did it was good too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, we, we flew by part one. We haven't yeah. yeah, 30 minutes flies by. Thank you very much for watching episode 15, part one. Every Friday, 7 p.m., it airs the short end of the stick, the most Yonkers podcast in the world. I'm Fran Jez, Shampoo. Jenny. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta say, Not it for you. say it I gotta say it for say it for you. you say it for you. <laughs> there you go. Peace and love. Stay, stay tuned next week at 7 p.m. for part two. Eastern Standard Time. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you like, subscribe, comment, anything you want to see us do. Let's talk about it. Or Thank anything you want us to look. talk about. Talk about it. Thank you for the support. Peace. Appreciate each and every one of you. Peace. Peace.